Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Well, there's no doubt about it. Theme songs played a huge part in our childhoods. They were fun, clever, enjoyable, and catchy as hell. In fact, a lot of these songs still stay hidden in the darkest corners of our memory, just waiting for inopportune moments to spring out of our heads and ruin our concentration. So, that's why today, I'm paying tribute to the top 11 best nostalgic songs ever. Why top 11? Because I like to go one step beyond. So, sit back and enjoy the top 11 catchiest nostalgic theme songs. Number 11. For many of us, Sesame Street was the first show we ever saw, and it only figures that the theme song would be as irritatingly catchy as the lessons it teaches us. Can you tell me how to get, how to get to Sesame Street? My only problem with this song is that they never do tell you how to get to Sesame Street! I mean, where the hell is it? Is it in Brooklyn? Chicago? New York? How do you get to this damn place? Wherever the hell it is, it made for a really great song, and the perfect beginning for our countdown. Sesame Street. Number 10. A reading rainbow. God, I hate this song. I think most people do, but it doesn't matter. Once you hear that obnoxious synthesizer in the opening, you're gonna be humming this crap for the rest of your life. What is that thing, anyhow? Dude, if every book played this song when I opened it up, I would never read again. Still, you can't fault the song for being so damn catchy, or the fact that it was the only show that actually made us want to read books. With that said, Reading Rainbow is the perfect placement for the number 10 spot. Number 9. This character was so popular that she actually got two hit shows with two hit theme songs. One was a game show where the entire theme song was played a cappella. And the other was a cartoon show with a full-fledged choir singing all the way through. I think the game show one is a little bit catchier, but the cartoon deserves an honorable mention. And when you're doing a show that's trying to be educational, you sure as hell better write something that our short attention spans can remember. Whichever one you like better, Carmen Sandiego definitely knew how to keep a good song in our heads. Number 8. Yeah, not only did this show have a great song, but it also had a kick-ass opening as well. I mean, look at that animation. How can you not be hyped after watching this opening? With the rock guitar, female singers, and fast-paced beat, Thundercats had us all ready for action. In fact, maybe it did it a little too well. I mean, as soon as the show started, the characters never moved like in the opening. I mean, look at this. They're barely moving a muscle. DO SOMETHING! Ah well, with that said, the opening song did a great job of hyping us up. So good that we didn't even care if the opening was better than the show half the time. Mixing great animation and great tunes, Thundercats is easily the perfect combo. Number 7. Alright, as much as I hate this show, I have to admit I really do love this theme song. It was the only thing I ever looked forward to whenever this show came on. And when the song ended, so did my tolerance for the show. But let's face it, it's a cool song, with its fast paced, kick ass guitar, and lyrics that are pretty easy to remember. Hate the show, love the song, but hey, that's Mighty Morphin Power Rangers for you. Number 6. Ah, uh, yes. You can't think all American without thinking G.I. Joe, and their song was the keen, essential American theme. It was big, triumphant, and one of the few theme songs that actually had counterpoint melodies, which means you always needed another kid to help you sing it. This is back in the day when the worst terrorist we had to deal with was Cobra. <sighs> God, I miss Cobra. When he threatened us, it was funny. When the real terrorist threatened us, it's just creepy. But when we heard that victorious theme, we all knew we'd be okay. Why? Because... G.I. Joe is there! G.I. Joe, a real American theme song. Number 5. Another song that practically seemed all American was Transformers. True, the guitar was great, the theme was memorable, and the animation was cool, but by far the best part was hearing that robotic voice say, Jesus, I could hear that all day. Oh, and don't think we weren't pissed when the song wasn't in the recent live action movie. I saw people actually wait until the end of the credits to hear the song. What'd we get? Nothing. The fucking sequel better have the song. In fact, you could probably use that for good marketing. 
You could actually call the film Transformers 2, yes, this one actually has the theme song. I guarantee ticket sales would go through the roof. Why? Because this song is that fucking good. Transformers, it's more than meets the ear. Number four. You'd think with all the lyrics in the world, the hardest ones to put to music would be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But surprisingly, they turned this totally insane title into one hell of a great song. I mean, every kid in the world knew this song, and got hyped up whenever we heard it. Though just like the Thundercats opening, it never looked quite as good as the opening credits. I mean, here's the opening, and now here's the actual show. I mean, do they look anything alike? I think most of these shows threw all their time and energy into the openings because they knew that once they hooked us in, we'd probably be too lazy to change the channel. Luckily, Ninja Turtles kicked ass, and it had a kick-ass song to go with it. Although I don't think turtle power ever became a popular phrase, no matter how much they tried to force it down our throats. Still, Ninja Turtles was the shit, and so was the theme song, making these heroes in a half shell number four on the countdown. Turtle power. Number three. Anything by the Richard Stone Team. For those of you who don't know, Richard Stone was a composer and songwriter in the 80s and 90s. He hit the big time when Steven Spielberg asked him to do the music and songs for some Warner Brothers cartoons he was producing. And the rest is history. Richard Stone and his team put together some of the cleverest and catchiest theme songs that ever hit TV. Remember this timeless classic? How about this one? And of course, the always popular. The Mickey and the Brain. The Mickey and the Brain. Stone's team didn't just do theme songs, though. They did all the music for the shows. Every little melody, every musical segue, and the only song in the world that actually made you want to learn geography. United States, Canada, Mexico, Panama, Haiti, Jamaica, Peru, Republic, Dominican, Cuba, Caribbean, Greenland, El Salvador, too. I mean it. Everyone tried to learn this song, but could never get it down. Anyone that made you actually try to educate yourself without you even knowing it is doing something right. Sadly, Richard Stone lost his life to pancreatic cancer in 2001, leaving a legacy of great music behind. Luckily, he is survived by these incredible tunes. With great music, fantastic lyrics, and ingenious writing, Richard Stone's team is more than eligible for the number three spot. And now our song is done. Number two. Talk about a song short on lyrics. The Inspector Gadget song has a total of five words in the entire thing. Inspector, Gadget, Go, and Woo Hoo. And yet they still managed to make this one of the catchiest songs that children ever heard. So how can a song with almost no lyrics stay fresh in our heads for so long? I don't know, it just does. While the opening credits are great, it's the closing credits I always look forward to. Because that's where you hear Dr. Claw say, I'll get you next time, Gadget. Next time. And not forgetting. The whole song kind of sounds like an 80s computer booting up, but for some reason you can't get enough of it. It's a weird love-hate relationship you have with some songs. Kind of like Devo. I mean, you know it was really weird, but for some reason it always stays in your head. Why? For whatever reason, Inspector Gadget isn't leaving us anytime soon. And if you manage to forget about this song right after you hear it, continue yourself dehumanized. And the number one catchiest nostalgic theme song is... God damn this song. From the minute you hear it, it is never gonna leave your head. This song tormented so many children, I can't even explain. You think you're trying to answer the questions on your math test, but nope, all you're thinking about is... You think you're playing basketball with your teammates, but nope, all you're thinking about is... You think you're about to achieve enlightenment. The pearly gates of knowledge are opening up, and all the secrets of the universe are about to be revealed. It will never leave, it will never leave. It's like an addiction. You think you're over it. You think, I only know a few lyrics of the song. Uh, what is it? Um, life is like a hurricane here in Duckburg. Race cars, lasers, airplanes, it's a duck blurg. Might solve a mystery or rewrite history. DuckTales, woohoo, every day that I've been making. DuckTales, woohoo, tales so daring, you can do DuckTales. The danger lurks behind you, there's a stranger out to find you. What to do is just grab onto some DuckTales! Woohoo! I mean, once you hear it once, it will never, ever go away. And you wanna know what the creepy thing is? I think this show stayed on the air strictly because of the theme song. I mean, think about it. What do you actually remember about this show? I remember Scrooge, his nephews, a pilot who crashed a lot. And that's it! I don't remember 
every goddamn other thing about this show. This show literally kept bringing us back simply because of the song. It is that powerful. So now that you've heard the catchiest nostalgic song of all time, tell the people. Warn them. Don't let them hear the song. Because once it gets into your head, it buries its way into your brain. Festering. Festering until it blooms into a gigantic ball of human waste that'll eat you alive! Warn the people! Warn the people! <laughs> I'm the nostalgia critic. I remember it so you don't have to.